for those of us on the other side of the table, we get barraged with information. And I'm wondering how, how do you both, do you just read annuals, 10Ks, and talk to people and ignore everything else? And how do you keep track of everything intellectually? Yeah. Well, we don't keep track of everything, but, but the, the beauty of, to some extent, of evaluating businesses, large businesses, is that it is all cumulative. I mean, if you, if you started doing it 40 or so years ago, you really have got a working knowledge of an awful lot of businesses, but there aren't that many to start with that are, you know, and, and you, you, you can get a fix, you know, how many, what are there, 75 maybe or so important industries, and you'll get to understand how they operate, and you don't have to start over again every day, uh, and you don't have to consult a computer for it or anything like that. It, so it has the advantage of, of uh, accumulation of useful information over time and you know you, you just add the incremental bit at some point you know why did we decide to buy coca-cola in 1988 well it may have been you know just a couple small incremental bits of information but that came into a mass that had been accumulated over over decades and uh it's a very it's a great business that way it's why we like businesses that don't change too much because the past is useful to us Charlie, i can't add a thing to that uh, Mr. Munger, I am intrigued by your marshalling of the Commodore and Aristotle to support your points. Uh, very few of today's money managers would or could do that. Um, could you elaborate on what role a study of history of civilization plays in developing a sound investment philosophy? Thanks. Well, I, I don't want to praise Aristotle too much. You know, he was the one who thought that women had a different number of teeth from men and <laughs> never looked in his wife's mouth. <laughs> Maybe his wife did. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm all in favor of a good general education, and I think it helps investment performance and it helps business performance, and it helps one be a better citizen. And, uh, and some of the things people say are quite memorable, and therefore they're helpful to the mind by the very ease with which they're remembered. And uh, I think you'd be surprised how many bright investment professionals could talk a lot about Aristotle or, or even people I can't stand, <laughs> like Hegel. <laughs>Do you want to quote a little more from anybody? No, no, no. <laughs> Reinforce your... Yeah. Oh, my, one of my favorite quotations in the whole world is from Einstein. He says, everything should be made as simple as possible, but no more simple. And uh, I think that describes the reality that we all face. Charlie's favorite, though, is Ben Franklin. At, uh, that's probably true, isn't it, Charlie? Yeah. We get more from Ben than, than anybody else. Keep thy shop and it will keep thee, that sort of thing. I mean, we're, yes. just, we're loaded with that stuff. <laughs> Three removes are as good as a fire. <laughs> it's hard for an empty sack to stand upright. <laughs> That's the Bible around Berkshire. Yeah. I once heard Warren say, the reason I'm so financially conservative is I, I don't want to find out how badly I might behave if I were stretched. <laughs> I think we better cut them off here. <laughs> Zone two, you better uh, yeah. cut the thumping there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>